Hi guys, it's Lynn here. Hope everyone is having a magnificent day. Now today guys, I'm going to talk to you about how I heat and insulate my cactus and succulent plant polytunnel. And those of you who've been following my, um, my videos for a while will know that we, when we moved house two and a half years ago, we had to leave a lovely greenhouse and a lovely garden and everything and move up, up to um, Northern Ireland. And we had to get this big, big polytunnel, which we absolutely love. But obviously polytunnels um, aren't the best for um, insulation because obviously this, a, a heat a big space like this as well. And being in Northern Ireland, it's very damp and cold, especially over the winter when we have a high humidity problem here. And um, the dampness is always the biggest problem. And um, obviously the cold, we don't have extremely cold temperatures. We, we don't get a lot of frost, if, if at all really. It's nice and mild in the winter times, but we do have a lot of very high humidity and damp problems. And um, I'm gonna talk to you in this video on how, what we do to minimize it as much as possible. Obviously we can't move to a hot sunny country, so we have to do the best to minimize how to, um, how we heat and insulate our cactus and succulent plant polytunnel. Now, number one is the obvious one, is we use a heater here. And this particular heater is by the BioGreen Phoenix. It's an absolutely fantastic heater, guys. And um, we have it on, it has got three settings. One is 1,000 watts, one is 1,800, and one is 2,800. And considering this polytunnel is 10 by 20, it's 20 feet long and 10 feet wide. It's a large polytunnel and it's a large area to have to heat. And I have to say, you know, normally a glass greenhouse <clears throat> probably be have to have it on like 2000 watts and probably have two of the heaters on. We only have to have this heater on 1000 watts and um, it heats the whole of this polytunnel. It's absolutely fantastic. And we have it on a thermostat where we have it set at five Celsius. So it means we don't have to have it on all the time. We just leave it plugged, plugged in, plugged on. And when the temperature inside the polytunnel, where the air temperature drops at five degree or just below, then it will automatically kick on. So the temperature never Ever drops below um, or much below five Celsius and five Celsius will be about 41 degrees Fahrenheit I like to say the two different temperatures because it depends where you are in the world some say Fahrenheit some say um, Celsius so that's what we do we have a heater so that's the obvious one um, we don't unheat Eat, and heat our greenhouse if we were living in a in a country that was very dry and arid we wouldn't really worry that much about the temperatures as I say we rarely get frost but obviously it's the dampness that's the biggest problem. So that's why we overwinter all of these plants at 5C or above. Um, to 41 degree Fahrenheit and this BioGreen uh, I'll probably do in the future I will do an actual video on this um, a bit more detail because it's one I really really recommend although it's an electric heater um, it is brilliant because we we only need to have it on a low setting and this has a fan um, on it I'll just show you here that actually circulates actually acts two things one is it pushes the heat right back to the end of the pipe and all the way up and it also the fan um if you was to put if i had this on now and put my hand here but it's quite quite strong and it's, it's brilliant because it put it moves the air about so not only does it help to heat the polytunnel but it makes the air moving about rather than just blowing hot air, hot air out and it helps to dry up excess moisture and because it helps to um, the fan helps to ventilate as well as heat it helps to stop any stagnant air and it's usually the the damp stagnant high humidity air that causes is mold and rots on cacti um, if it's moving then it does obviously ventilate that way because it's a polytunnel the biggest disadvantage we don't have windows when we used to have our little greenhouse um, it, we always had and even when we had the conservatory in overwintering plants in there I could have the windows open even on cold winter days to ventilate if it was dry we can't do that here but we do have a door there which we have open normally roll this up and lovely dry winter day today and the cold wouldn't affect them when it's dry and um, that helps to ventilate so we had tried to ventilate this this polytunnel on dry uh, winter days as much as we can by having the door open and uh, as long as it's not windy um, it ventilates that way but as I say the, the heater does a great job so that's the BioGreen Phoenix and I made a video when I did a, we actually installed this and when we actually unboxed it as well so if you want to know a bit more about this heater um, do check that video out links will be up above
And I have actually made a whole series on this polytunnel when we first got it two and a half years ago, when we installed it, when we first put the cover on, when we put the bubble wrap on, when we lined the floor, everything. It's a whole series. So I'm going to put the links to that playlist at the end of this video. And um, I'm also going to, um, yeah, it's going to be on the end annotations after the end, very end of this video. So click on that if you want to see how this how this polytunnel has progressed and uh, over the past two and a half years so that's that so that's the heater that's that's obviously the main one and the next one is bubble wrap now the bubble wrap is absolutely essential as you can see here um this we have we use the big thick bubble wrap here which is the big um the lovely big bubbles on it and we only because it is quite thick bubble wrap, we only just have the one layer on. And we also bubble wrap the roof as well because heat rises and that helps to keep the heat in. A lot of heat is lost through the roof. And having a plastic polytunnel um, does really help. If it was glass, it would be a lot colder and it would attract a lot, attract a lot more moisture to the glass, um, which also creates more humidity. But it's great because the, the bubble wrap seems to be pretty dry here, which is brilliant. So that's obviously we have to completely bubble wrap. And links to a video when we bubble wrap the polytunnel. Uh, the links up above to the bubble wrap in the polytunnel video do check that out so bubble wrap is a must if you're overwintering plants in outdoors in a cold environment and you have a greenhouse or polytunnel and the second one is floor the floor insulation now a lot of people have greenhouses and just have the floor tiled and there's nothing really wrong with that but tiles and um, even gravel can be very very cold and um, not necessarily the best on sunny days it can attract heat and then slowly release it throughout the night so it has its bonuses but with this this when we moved in here this is just a yard and it did have tiles that were a little bit messy and everything but we've actually lined the floor with a bit of foam lining it's about that thick and um, it's what they actually use on carpets before they put carpet down so we completely covered all of this polytunnel floor with that lining i'll just see if i can actually show you a bit of it might be a little bit underneath here yes this is it I'm not quite sure what it's called but we completely covered that that with the polytunnel and then what we've done then is obviously put a load of what they call um i think it's it's the, 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 the blue lining on here terrapaulin terrapaulin it's commonly called all on the top as well and that stops moisture and damp from rising up through the tiles and obviously going into the polytunnel. It keeps it dry in here and also offers a good source of insulation from the cold floor. So that's another thing as well. And I think we made a video when we actually did the, did the lining of the floor. I think we did. Um, if I have, the links will be up above now. Do check that out. And that's the reason why I'm giving you all these links is if you, have a, if you want to get a polytunnel or greenhouse or anything like that to house your plants in, and you don't live in a warm country these tips hopefully will help you and as i say this is we're into our third year now of having this polytunnel and i'm very very pleased with it we only got it just a temporary one until we could get a greenhouse and we've just kept it up because it does the job it's absolutely fantastic but you do have to insulate it a lot and um, you have to really secure it down um, we have sandbags going all the way down and we also have under there big water barrels filled with water covered the top so the water doesn't come obviously doesn't condensate out and have it tied up there so if we get storms and winds which we do here it does not move at all um, so that's a good tip if you want to if you want to have a polytunnel the most important thing is that you make sure you secure it down and sandbags are a must because it weighs it down and stops it from blowing away in the wind and um, the other thing is the door we insulated the door because with the um, greenhouses and polytunnels especially uh, when we had this door closed I'll just show you how the, the door is there um, there's always gaps going around the top and on very windy days the wind will blow out and it obviously lets heat out so we have a door here that Hans has made we designed this um, has a little bit like a blind we, we just pull it up on a, on a nice dry day like that we'd have that pulled up and um, then we pull it down then when we go out and we have this also insulated with some of that some cloth lining here like some fleece that you use on plants we've got quite a few layers of it about 10 layers of that fleece here and we have again some of that terrapaulin um, here for the door and then we've we've sort of sewn in some of this this material to act as a blind now Hans made this so if you want to know how we made it it's a great tip to to put more heat in then do check a video we've made on um, how we made our and insulated our polytunnel door links also up above it's a great idea and um, it just adds a bit more insulation there as well, stops any drafts from coming out, any of the winds. And then 
that's it pretty much how we, we water, heat and insulate our cactus and succulent plant polytunnel. Now what we found is absolutely brilliant is recently um, me and Hans we got treated ourselves to a minimum and maximum thermometer and hygrometer for outdoor use. And we installed it, in, we have what had the main monitor, the, the receiver is in our house. And we have three sensors here, there's one, two and three, that we have all, uh, all in the polytunnel. At one, the first one is right at the very, very back here. And then the second one we have here. And the third one then we have over here by the door. So all sort of spaced out in the polytunnel. And it tells us the humidity inside the polytunnel. And also it tells us the temperature, which is absolutely great because it means we don't have to keep coming out of the house into the polytunnel to have a look what the temperature is. Um, we have, so we have a heater that comes on, it drops below five, so we have peace of mind there. But it's always good to know what the, what the temperature is anyway. Um, and also, especially the humidity, which is the biggest problem here in Ireland and the UK in general so we found that very good and when we when we got this um, indoor and outdoor thermometer um, it works off Wi-Fi so as I say it's in the house so we don't have to go into the polytunnel at all it gives the reading in the house and we know what 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 the temperature is out in the polytunnel and we made a video when we did it's it's the uh, thermometer by Araya and it, I got it on Amazon and links up above to that video also on that minimum maximum thermometer it's brilliant guys very very happy with it and it saves so much hassle having to go in and out the house to check the temperature and the humidity and especially when we have a polytunnel that's green coated because once we're out there we've got the polytunnel door down we just want to keep it closed and um, we can't check what it is because we can't see it's different with the greenhouse because we could see by the thermometer on the outside on the glass but um, it's easier now it's in the house so there you go guys that's really it and i hope you found this video useful and do you guys grow your cacti and succulents and overwinter them in a polytunnel or a greenhouse and if you do how do you how do you keep yours insulated and um how do you heat if you have to heat your polytunnels or greenhouses links um sorry leave your comments down below to how you heat and insulate your greenhouses and polytunnels if you do <laughs> if you happen to if you have to live in a cold damp climate then do let me know so guys thank you so much for watching and if you want to know a little bit more on how to um, grow cacti and succulents please do check out my website desertplantsofavalon.com and if you haven't done already please do subscribe and also click that notification bell so you get notified when I upload new videos and thank you all so much for your support and I want to send you loads of love, heaps of happiness and tons and tons of cactus and plant power from across the Emerald Isle. And until the next video, bye.